Hi, this is Russ from Studio One Expert, and I want to give you an overview of the new features in Studio One 4. Now, over the coming days and weeks, we'll be doing some more in-depth tutorials showing you how to get the best from Studio One 4. This is simply a show and tell. It's showing you the new features, giving you a rough overview of them. We won't go into much detail, but it gives you a kind of bird's eye view of what to expect from Studio One 4 and whether you want to consider upgrading or coming from a different door to Studio One now it has features that you were waiting for. So I'm going to go in in order and the first thing I want to talk about is the arranging and editing features that have changed. Now the first big one is there's now a chord track built in and what chord track enables you to do is both identify and then manipulate the chords and the harmonics of either an instrument track or MIDI for those who are not used to Studio One or an audio track and it's built in on the timeline and you can see here at the top here we've got this chord track showing now at the moment it's off and we can do one of two things we can identify it from either the audio here I'll just play you that well here's the bass here so when I identify chords I'll probably start with the audio of the piano because that's got chord structure and that's just single notes so right mouse click and you go detect chords as you can see very quickly the chords are now showing here then what we can do, we can then go here and we go to the audio and we'll go extract a chord track. And now the chords are showing up here in the chord track. So now we've got a chord track. That's the, you, it could be as simple as that. You could just have simply a chord track and then you can have chord track switched on and we can then apply the chord track to any or all of the things. Obviously I wouldn't apply it to the drums. So what I can then do is come into here, follow chords, turn that on and there's a special bass setting there and here I've got one and I can turn that on as well follow chords I'm going to choose universal for audio and now what I can do then is if I double click on here I can bring up my chord selector and I can say okay I want that to be G minor instead of B flat so as you can see uh, it's very powerful and very good for if you're writing a song and you want to try different things. We can say, okay, I didn't want I didn't want G minor. Uh, I want to go back to B flat, or I can make that take that from the minor to the major. So it's very powerful way of being able to manipulate your song in different ways. So that's chord track. So it gives you automatic chord detection. You can then apply it to other tracks as well. Uh, so that's the first really cool feature and the second cool feature is now this ARA2 support which for those uh, who use ARA devices such as Melodyne uh, then that's built in as well so the other feature I want to talk about now is a, is a feature if you've come from things like Pro Tools uh, is ripple editing so I've got this song and I've already chopped it into pieces so there's the intro Here comes the verse. I guess I'll never get to see you in that And here's the chorus. Sun's out, the sky is blue. And there's the bridge. And here's the middle eight or the breakdown. Sun's out, the sky is blue. Now, without ripple editing, what would happen? Let's say I wanted to move this, uh, which is the chorus, further down the song. Well, in with no ripple editing, then what would happen if I move that down the song? It would simply come and go there and give, give me a big gap. Now what ripple editing does is really cool because what it does is when I switch ripple editing on, if I picked up for example the chorus here and bring it down there, everything moves up. Sun's out, the sky is blue. So very quickly I can try different ideas out for the song. So I could come here instead and think well actually I don't, I want to start with that kind of riff. And I don't want that guitar intro anymore so that's all moved down as I delete it and if I then duplicate it it will move everything up to go with it then what I want to do is pick this up here and pick this audio up here drag it across there Hit the X key and then I could. So never get 
to see you in that little blue dress. Obviously, I'm rushing it for the for the whole video, but normally you get the point. Now, without ripple editing, that was quite a complex task. There were workarounds. You could use uh, the arranger mode and stuff like that. But this is a massive editing shortcut. As you say, when it's on, you can move songs about so fast. I could pick this up and bring it down to the beginning of the song here instead. Sun's out, the sky is blue, and all Lose I this intro. And again, turn ripple editing off. So as you can see, arranging tracks is much faster or doing any kind of edit where things are moving around. So ripple editing is the other feature. There's relative bar offset for songs and there's remove gaps for events. Now the next change for Studio One version 4 is Impact XT. This is Impact on Steroids. It gives you a completely new look. It's got eight pad banks and the way you get to those pad banks in terms of the MIDI control is it basically scatters them across the whole keyboard. So A is uh, from the first C up to uh, the, the next highest D sharp and it just keeps going up and up and up the keyboard if you want to work like that. So eight pad banks easily accessible. And then the next thing is that you have 32 outputs now, 16 stereo and 16 mono. You can now color code your pads as well, sort of very like Machina. And then you have a new z a 24 dB zero delay feedback filter. You also now have uh, filter drive and punch controls. Uh, you've got soft clipping mode. Uh, you can edit pads in quite a lot of detail now, and I won't show you in too much detail today, there'll be a separate uh, video for that, but it gives you lots of pad editing, things like one shot loop. Uh, if you put loops on a pad, you can mix loops with single shots, and then you can tie them to the, uh, the uh, tempo of the track, and uh, use time stretch to make sure they stay in time with the rest of the track. Uh, Following the song tempo, you can uh, trigger quantization now. You can got 32 sample choke groups. But what I wanted to show you was two or three really cool things in this, and then we'll move on to the next new feature in Studio One Four. So what I wanted to show you is some really cool import features. So let's get ourselves a, a clean uh, window. And what I'm going to do first is bring in a pile of samples. So I've got this jazz drum kit here. I'm going to grab all of these samples, each one of them and I'm going to drag them over on top of uh, the first pad. Now if I press shift then and let go, it stacks them across the pads, which is really useful, very useful. Then of course, as I say, using the thing I just mentioned, I can press command shift and very quickly I can move everything around and rebuild that kit and get it into the, into the uh, setup I want. So there we go. and then we can do all sorts of editing. So that's stacking a load of samples across different pads. Now the other cool feature as well is you can also then take a, a, a beat, I've got a break beat here, that's... Uh... If I pick that up, I've got two options. I can bring it in and drop it on whole pad. Or I can press shift as I drop it on the pads and that will then mean that I can just pick it up drag it on the first pad, press shift, and it'll spread. And then edit those separately. So I've got that across the keyboard now. Very, very cool indeed. So that's Impact XT, and there's tons and tons and tons of other features as well. Now sample one has had a major refresh as well. As you can see, it looks different again. It has a number of cool features. It's got its own record page now, so you can record live into it, but you can also map things into it as well. So I could take a subgroup uh, or a send or a bus or, edit or an instrument output, and I could record directly from that within Studio One. It's got massive features for, for putting samples into it. So again, we could just pick something up from the timeline like this. We could just pick it up and drag it in. Now that's on one key at the moment, as you can see there. So what we could do instead is I could go to uh, this and pick it up again, pick it up and drop it and press the shift key and it will slice it instead. And I've got it across. Then we can go in and edit samples if we wanted to. 
and do all sorts of really cool things with the samples as well. Uh, it's got a mapping option, so we can map it across the keyboard. So it's an instant sampler if you want it, and you can just move those samples around. You can put it across a number of keys like that. Uh, you can change the envelopes on each stuff as well. Again, we're not going to get into much detail, but this is a powerhouse now. So for example, if you had a, a backing vocal part that you just wanted to spin into the track and keep repeating that, you could drag and drop it into this or record it directly into this file, the record option, and you have a very powerful uh, sampling powerhouse. And of course, as well, there's a whole load of effects built in as well. Modulation, delay, reverb, uh, distortion, EQ. There's even a gator built in. So it's really, really powerful uh, as a basic sampler. It's it's taken sample one right up a level. The next cool thing is there's now a drum editor built in. So not only do we have the piano roll option, we also have a drum editor option if you want to work like that. Now where it really starts to get very cool, this is my favourite feature hands down, it's the pattern feature. And the way to explain patterns is basically it's like having a 909 or an 808 in the timeline. It makes creation of drums really straightforward. And some really, really cool features built into this. So if I build a new pattern, I've got two here already, so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to create a new pattern here. And as you can see, there's some really cool things. So I could put four on the floor, like that. Now what's very cool is if you're an old user of C-Lab and things like that, then there's a feature I've wanted for so long. If I just want to do four on the floor with that kick drum, I can just make it, it's playing four on the floor, but it's only playing four beats in the bar. And then it's looping around the rest. So I can have, so for example, I've got four there. I could put uh, in the hi-hat 16, I'm just going to draw in. So the, the hi-hats are looping around 16, but the kick's looping around on 4. And then the snare, we could put that on 8. Now where it gets really good is there's a couple of things that are really nice. The first one is probability. So for example, what you often do to make things sound quite, as I say, uh, quite humanize it a bit, you could put in the velocity, of course, which is what a lot of people do. But what you can do now is probability as well. And what that basically means is that if you do this, and I've spent some time on this, spend some time building the probability up, you can almost have drum parts that never repeat twice. Then the next cool thing is the repeat option. I love repeat. So what we can do is just put some repeats in. Get it really glitchy if you want. Now see that says five, so it's doing, if I don't want that much, then what I can do is just bring down that probability right down. So there's a 14% chance of that playing. There it was that time. So you get the point. It's just super, super powerful. And you can do all sorts of stuff. You could make that nine if you wanted to. So the snare's dropping in all sorts of places. We could put swing in. Now the great thing is, because it's a pattern then, all you do is just drag it out to get more of it or take it smaller. So it's very, very, very cool. Really good for building up drum parts. And then if you've got a pattern, let's say this one, uh, that could be your verse pattern. Then we just do a duplication of it and uh, Variation 2, and there it is, and you can see here it says variation 2 there now, so I go back up to variation 1, I say there, and I could copy this across to there, there's variation 2, and very quickly we can build up some really powerful songs, so that's now going to make that variation 1. And in variation 2 we might uh, do some really cool stuff on the kick drum. So 
So as you can see, it's, it's, as I say, it's like having a drum machine on the timeline. So it doesn't just stop with drums. You can use this for synths. You can do some really, really cool stuff. It's just brilliant. And as I say, all these different loop lengths are really cool. And say, so when I was working in things like C-Lab 25, 30 years ago, it was just so cool to be able to build things very quickly. So you had a bass part that went over eight, eight bars, and then you had uh, another part that went over four bars. And it's just very cool. So it's one of my favorite features, as you could probably guess. So the next new feature I want to show you that has been asked for for so long, especially from Pro Tools users, is AAF import and export. Uh, I've got an AAF uh, import here that's been sent to me by my friend Eli over in Canada. Did it in Logic. And the way you do AAF in import is very simple. You just grab it and drop it in. And there it is. Now, the first thing it says to me is I can't find any of the files. So all I need to do is choose the file, grab all the audio, Search in the folder, I tell it where to go. There it is, open, accept, and there's all my audio. So once it's all brought in, it, as you can see, the great thing about AF is I don't need full length stems. This is how it was laid out in Logic. And as you can see, it's got gaps chopped in, but it's all there in the track. Now, depending on, on the door that you export your AF from, you'll have all sorts of other options as well. You can bring in things like pan and volume, and straight away, it's just very, very powerful. Now this works in the other direction as well. So I go file, save as, and there's a new option there now, and it's AAF. And I just choose the folder to send it to. I've got to make sure I keep the audio files in that folder, and then I can save that as an AAF. Uh, so it works in both directions. Very useful for when you're working with other people who may not be using Studio One, or if you're moving from another door to Studio One and you want to bring your songs in. Speaking of that, the other cool new feature, if we create a new song, is that uh, we can now import song data. The next cool new feature is import song data, which people have been asking for for a long time, and very straightforward it is indeed. You just go song, and you go to import song data here. Press open, and then we can choose to bring things in. We can bring in the tempo track, the marker tracks. We can bring in, let's say I just wanted to bring the drums in, so I could just choose drums there. I like those, and the overheads, I want that. I want the reverb unit he's used as well. I want the events in, the layers, the automation. We can choose all sorts of different things. You can copy the media across, and also bring in console options as well. And as you can see, it's imported all the drums and the effects I wanted, and I can use that for, the, for a new song. So very cool feature as well. So some other minor features, but still very useful. One of them is that now there is a notepad feature built in to the uh, channels and so we could say okay double click in there use hall uh, and write those those things in uh, that's the nice new feature as you can see the GUI has got some slight changes here the way it's been laid out it's it's just a bit more clear about what's going on in there so you can see some some GUI changes there then the other feature some people are going to love and super going to hate there's a new kind of light view mode when I mean that if we go into the preferences and we go into the appearance we can now change the luminance here and almost have a kind of I suppose I would call it a Ableton Live look or the old-fashioned view as well so if you like that kind of look you can go for that look and uh, do all sorts of things uh, it's not my cup of tea but for some people on laptops or stuff they might like that version instead so that's there as well so in summary, I think you could say this is a bit of a powerhouse of a release in version 4. As I say, the new arranging and editing features, uh, the chord track, the AEF import, uh, the virtual instrument updates, uh, so, so many new features. And it's, it's well worth checking out. And it's a really great release from PreSonus. Download the demo and check it out for yourself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.